Hi, welcome to this video on variable acceleration vectors. Now suppose we've got a particle P moving along this curve and at any instant its position vector is given by R. Now if we take unit base vectors say I parallel to the x-axis and J parallel to the y-axis then we can describe R in terms of T. We can say that R is equal to some function of t in the i direction, we'll call it f of t in the i direction, plus some other function of t, let's say g of t in the j direction. So for instance the position vector of r could be say r equaling a half t squared in the i direction, plus say one third t cubed in the j direction. And so by varying t we can build up a path for r. So t represents time and if I took values of t going from naught to say 4 I could build up a table with those values in. And you'll see I've done it here. And for instance if t was equal to 3 then you'll see that x turns out to be 4.5. That's because I've substituted 3 into here, 3 squared is 9 and half of 9 is 4.5. So I've got 4.5 in the i direction. And substituting t equals 3 in the j component we get a third of 3 cubed. That turns out to be a third of 27 which is 9. So after three seconds the position vector r of the particle would be at 4.5 i and 9 j. And you might want to pause the video and just check out these other values. Now I didn't let on earlier but this particular table represents the points on this curve for various values of t. Look I'll show you. When t equals naught the particle would be at the origin so I've got the particle here at t equals zero. Now if I look at when t equals one just look across here and you'll see the particle start to move. So at t equals one well it's hardly moved it's moved to 0 0.5 0 0.33 when t equals 2 it's now at 2, 2.67 and then 3 it's at 4.5, 9 and at 4 it's at 8, 21.33. I didn't work out what it would be when t was equal to 5 but if we did it would be just off the graph. Now what I'd like to do is run the motion of the particle P through in real time. So let's return the particle back to the origin because that's where it is when t equals zero. Now I'm going to cycle through the times t equals naught, not to four but up to five. That means that we'll see the particle just go beyond the uh, edge of the graph here. So as I say we'll repeat this several times over just so we can analyze the motion of that particle P. So as you can see the particle starts from the origin and moves slowly at first gaining speed as it moves along the curve. Now what we're interested in is to be able to calculate the velocity and acceleration of P at any time t. So let's stop the particle from moving. Now the velocity v at any time t is given as the rate of change of the position vector with respect to time. So in other words it's dr by dt. And when it comes to acceleration 
acceleration is the rate of change of velocity. So A equals dV by dt. So to get V, we need to differentiate R with respect to T. So let's just do that. We know that V is equal to dr by dt. So differentiating the i component here, half times the power 2 gives us 1, and then we reduce the power by 1, so we just get 1t, or simply t, in the i direction. And then for the j component, we're going to have a third multiplied by the power 3, which is 1, reduce the power by 1, and you get 1t squared, or just simply t squared. And that's in the j direction. So this gives us the velocity of the particle p at any time t. And again, by taking various values of t, say from 0 to 4, I can build up a table. So again, just like we had here, you can check out the various values of t and substitute them in to get the x and the y components for i and j. Now, suppose I move the particle to the point when t equals 3. So at this point, we can see that when t equals 3, we've got a velocity of 3 in the i direction, plus 9 units in the j direction. And we can plot that velocity vector then onto our diagram. Now note how the velocity vector here is 3 units across, 9 units up. 3 across, 9 units up at t equals 3. And also I want you to notice that the velocity vector is also a tangent to the curve at this particular point. Now what I'll do is we'll take the particle back to when t equals naught and we'll step it through these time intervals and you can have a look then at the velocity vector. Now when t equals naught it's back at the origin and also it's got no velocity. After one second it's moved to this point and its velocity is 1i plus 1j. So you can see it's just a small velocity. After two seconds, the velocity has increased. And notice that it's a tangent to the curve. Three seconds, that's what we did earlier. Again, the velocity has increased and a tangent to the curve. And after four seconds, you can see the difference. And what we'll now do is just run it through in real time, several times over. So here we have it moving in real time. Only up to four seconds, but again, have a look how that velocity vector increases. And again, that is always a tangent to the curve. Let's pause it. Now I want to work out the acceleration a of the particle p now at any time t. And as I set up here, what we've got to do is differentiate the velocity with respect to time. So if the velocity was given by ti plus t squared j, then the acceleration a would be equal to dv by dt. And differentiating that with respect to time, if we differentiate t, the i component here, we're just going to get 1i, or just simply i. And then if we differentiate t squared, that's going to be 2t in the j direction. And as we did before, we can again create a table for values for t going from 0 to 4. And I've done that already. So you can see and or check out the values of x and y that we get for any of these values of time t. So if I move the particle on to the point where t equals 4, 
at eti plus 21.33j. Then the acceleration of p when t equals 4 will be given as 1i plus 8j. And we can mark this on. Now look at the direction of that acceleration. It's no longer a tangent to the curve. In fact, in this example, you'll see that it's inclined slightly inwards. And again, we'll run this through in real time for 0 to 4 seconds. Now as the particle moves around the curve then, notice how the acceleration acts slightly inwards. Now we should be familiar with the fact that force equals mass times acceleration. So since f equals ma and force is a vector quantity and so is acceleration, then the force f must act in the direction of acceleration. So if I mark it on, you can see how that force is pushing that particle slightly inwards to bend it off course. OK, well, I hope it's given you an idea then how, when given the position vector r as a function of t in the i direction as, and a function of t in the j direction, that to get that velocity vector then, all we need to do is differentiate the position vector with respect to time. And to get the acceleration, we just differentiate the velocity with respect to time. And that the force F always acts in the direction of the acceleration. So this is just an introduction. In further videos, we'll be looking at questions revolving around this idea.